Thank you for watching this week's Tip of the Week. I'm Phil Baylor with Pave Tool Innovators. This week I want to talk to you about foundational principles for laying X-less patterns. It's stronger, you don't have that horizontal shift both ways, and obviously when you run at a distance and you create a T, that's a stopping point where that pattern's not going to continue past it. You get strength obviously by over, overlapping in such a way that it, it uh, eliminates those bond lines. And when I say bond lines, like if you have a stack bond, it would be all the seams lining up. That has the least amount of strength out of any kind of building process. Herringbone, with you're having your, uh, all your products laid out in a herringbone pattern, that is your strongest pattern because each individual product is surrounded by six pavers. And then they took it to the next level, even we saw in early uh, hardscaping, they had like the Z-shaped paver, and then they would lay that in a herringbone pattern. So you had even more points of uh, connection to eliminate any kind of lateral movement. So the three-piece systems that are out there for laying horizontally, they can be laid in the X-less pattern fairly easily. Just some things you gotta kinda train your brain to think about ahead of time so you don't get yourself in those binds where all of a sudden you're creating those, those X's or intersections. So before I start drawing, again, let's take a trip through history. Go back to the pyramids, 4,500 years old, if you look and zoom into those pyramids, you'll see these huge, massive stones, but they're not stacked on top of each other. They're offset in half bond configuration, which obviously gives you something like that look. And that's what adds that strength to keep products from literally sh laterally shifting, moving forward, global shifting, global stability being taken away from that. That's really important. And that's why those products have lasted for 4,500 years because they were built with integrity based on some of those simple principles that I'm gonna show you here today. So now talking about paver installations, my eye is automatically attracted to something like this where I see an X. This would allow product to laterally shift because there's no separation or no interlock here and it also could shift this way because there's no interlock here. For any one of these patterns, it's impossible for any of this to laterally shift because it's gonna hit somewhere along the line where it's gonna stop and not be able to move. I guess just something to think about when you are installing these three-piece systems. You have your square, you have your small rec, and then you'd have your large rec. When you start laying, they always give you more squares and Twinkies on most of these uh, patterns, or most of these products. So I would try to lay it in that pattern of rectangle and square, right? I can lay my rectangle here, put my another Twinkie here, square here, another square. I don't wanna get longer than say four feet. So I can still do my Twinkie here, or small, I call it a Twinkie, small rectangle. I can do here, I would have to bridge this, not gonna do a rectangle there. I'm gonna to wanna to get out to this point so I can break this line. So I can do a couple things. I can do a small rec, and I can do my square here. And it would be a matter of, if I wanna break this line, I can put a square out this distance. Work this over. Maybe do another rectangle here. keep thinking ahead and just watching out for these trouble points. We don't want to get in a lot of uh, small, short, little staggered points every half a block away because that'll automatically make you have to uh, offset that. And I can break this line. This line's getting a little bit long, so I want to make sure I come out here with an X. I mean, with a square. I can break this line right away. This is one of those points, I have all these spots here. I can't do a Twinkie, I can't do a square. I know I have to come across here with a rectangle. I can do another square here. Nice 
just do a rectangle. I'm gonna break this line. Come back here with your square. Twinkie here. Square here. Square here. Do a twinkie. Another square here. I don't do that with a rectangle here. Right? And do a square. This I can offset this. Let's do a square. And do a twinkie here. Here I want to do a twinkie this way. And do another square this way. Hopefully it makes sense. You know, you just start playing around. You can do it even on graph paper to kind of get your mind to kind of train to get away from the, the X's. Another thing, you want to use your squares and your small rects often. And then your large rectangle is the one that kind of gets you out of those binds. You saw, I mean, a couple of spots. I almost put a square here. I said, oh, I need the rectangle to get past that. So kind of simple thinking. Once you get into it and you start thinking that way, it's amazing how quick it goes and how easily it installs. I hope it's been helpful. I do. I love going back to that foundational thinking. Some of our forefathers that built stuff that lasts obviously thousands of years. And that's really where I want to go. And for us to start thinking about how we can build with structural integrity, that products and installations can last for a lifetime. Thank you for watching. Make sure you go to our website, pavetool.com. You can sign up there for our tip of the week. Also check us out on all our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Thank you for watching.